what's happening seventh graders? Hey, it's uh, Labor Day weekend, and uh, it's a long weekend, and uh, regardless of that fact, you still will have a little lecture here for Monday's class, even though we won't be there, because there is work that is going to come along in your modules in Canvas for Labor Day, but you will have all week to finish it. Um, so a little YouTube, your first YouTube video as a lecture, because I will not be in line with you, will be about the lasting legacy of Rome and uh, the lasting legacy of the modern day art architecture and law. <clears throat> when we're talking about Rome, um, I wonder if it was as hot out there as it is in he here in Southern California right now, but uh, regardless, I'm sitting inside an air conditioned room and uh, it's uh, quite comfortable. I am not inside the ruins of the Colosseum, but uh, can you imagine all the things that were going on inside? that piece of architecture at the time of Augustus. Well, when we talk about uh, Latin and literature, they are two of the legacies that have endured over 2,000 years. Um, the oldest existing example of written Latin is on a Greek cloak pin from around the 7th century uh, BC. Small communities along the Tiber River still spoke Latin as Rome began its rise. Latin became the language of Rome and then spread along the Rome's borders. Long after the empire was gone, Latin was the language used in the most major universities. Latin was also used uh, in the Roman Catholic Church and it was expected and used up until the 20th century in all religious services. Roman art, architecture, and law profoundly influenced the development of Western society. Uh, then when we look about the planning of a city on how cities were, were developed, we have to look at Rome again. Uh, city planning was a deliberate and thoughtful process in the Roman Empire. They preferred shape with a square. Or I should say their preferred shape was a square. Wide avenues would run from the midpoint of each side directly across the opposite side. Side streets were based off that grid. So you know what a grid is. It's like, you, you know, you, like your math graph paper. So you would look at that. And the forum was located near the center of the Roman towns. Forums were open spaces where commerce was conducted and the business of politics took place. Purpose-driven structures often appeared on the perimeter of the forum, including shops, tax collectors, yuck, we hate them, and temples. Large cities might have a multiple uh, area where there would be several forums uh, dedicated to specific activities such as finance or uh, administration. Many Roman cities uh, in the north of uh, the area became abandoned in the seventh century and then largely covered by sand, which is kind of crazy if you think about it. Uh, traditional celebration to announce the entry into a new era or city or thing um, was, was big under Augustus because he preserved what he could of Republican institutions. He added much that was his own. His Rome, his Rome, you know, you get that Augustus's Rome, had become very Italian, and that's not a bad thing. Uh, if you ask me, um, it would have been better if he said, had become very Sicilian, but, uh, and the spirit is reflected in the art and the literature of his reign. The greatest writers were native Italians, go figure. And like the rulers whose programs they glorified, they used the traditional as the basis for something new. When we look at some of the uh, great writers of this time. We look at Virgil and Horace, um, who kind of like imitated the writings of the classical Greeks, but uh, chiefly in the form things were written. So they would look at the structure of a Greek, Greek writing and, and do that. But their tone and uh, their projection of what they were trying to write was the glory of Italy and the faith in Rome that inspired uh, their creativity. 
uh, under the Republic, you know, because Rome was an empire, then turned into a Republic, uh, powers like Augustus would have been distributed among several holders. You know, when they say holders, they're talking about people would have had little jobs, um, you know, and they would have been in charge of doing that little section. Uh, what when when talking about Augustus, well, he took care of every. He was in charge of everything. He he wanted everything in his hands. He wanted nothing else. He wanted nobody else to help him. Although he did have his people working for him, it all re, it all came down to what Augustus wanted. Um, he simultaneously and without any time limit uh, made decisions that were good for Rome. And uh, I believe he felt that if I made the decision, then then I'm the one to blame if it doesn't work. Um, they made him an emperor, as we talked about earlier in the other sections, but it did not necessarily make him military tyrant. Now, if we look what a tyrant is, um, it's somebody who is out of control, who uh, does things ruthlessly, and um, that wasn't Augustus. Although Augustus... Um, he kind of like broke down the army into a smaller section and and took civilian functions and, and separated them. Um, <clears throat> Augustus was no different from Republican consuls or or sections. Uh, to, it, he his military power was huge, you know, huge. But he chose not to brandish it. He didn't want to show the power that he had which uh, is kind of like good because, you know, you, the silent type is, is the most dangerous type, as they say. Um, he wanted everything to remain civilian-like, peaceful. And uh, regardless, of, that's why we had Pax Romana, correct? And Pax Romana was 200 years of Roman peace. Um, some of the safeguards were lacking though everything was at the emperor's discretion and even augustus passed legislation that made um certain behaviors illegal uh treason uh, whether it was real or suspected and uh don't think that because augustus was out for peace that he was not willing to behead you or kill you for going against his word um there had been no constitutional safeguards in the Republic under, uh, you know, all the other ones, the, the other rulers, um, such as uh, Pompey or Caesar. And, and Augustus improved police services probably the most. So he had his, his guard, you know, the, the Imperial Guard watching over the Roman Empire and uh, them themselves were kind of like the police. And they kind of helped the lower class Romans feel more at ease because they realized they were safer under Augustus. Um, many of the senatorial class though, you know, the Senate, um, they contain a little bit of resentment towards uh, him because uh, of his ideals and uh, his power because he kind of like waned or took away some of Senate's power. Um, that they had under Caesar and, and Pompey. Uh, the Roman Empire, um, when we look at uh, art and literature, you know, we, we celebrated poetry and comedies, dramas, um, histories. Uh, although the Romans did avoid certain tragedies of, of art, um, they eventually came about. They owe a great debt, a great debt uh, for their art and literature to the Greeks. I mean, like, once again, we look at um, Athens, Greece, because that's where all the great writers of Greek came from. And they educated Romans um, because they were inferior at the time. So we, we here we are saying we, the Romans uh, kind of... Uh, copied what the Greeks were doing and uh, by putting words into Latin. Uh, Romans exercise would have been needless though for a number of highly educated citizens could speak and read both Greek and Latin. 
many young upper-class Romans even continued education in Athens once they left Rome. So although the link to Greek um, Hellenism would remain for years to come, the Romans would soon develop a rich literature of their own. And the New Age under Augustus also produced many young poets who reacted differently to the changes in Roman politics and society. So they, they spent a lot of time writing about change of the politics and society under Augustus. Um, the greatest of all supposedly Roman poets was Catullus. Um, he was a lyricist. He uh, kind of like avoided all personal involvement in politics and he looked to his neighbors to the east, uh, which were the Greeks, um, for his inspiration. According to um, many, his poetry was both passionate and um, of urban life with an, an awareness of life itself. And he raised Latin poetry under Rome to different heights. So once again, we look at Augustus as being this supreme ruler. We have to look at the things that uh, shaped under Rome, such as architecture, which we talked about, the arches and the vaults and the, the improvement to cement, right? We have to look at the uh, roads that were built by the soldiers uh, throughout, not just Rome, but into Europe. And we have to look at the use of why those roads were important because number one, it was to be able to send the troops wherever they had to go. But these roads were built so wide that, that a whole regiment of, of Roman soldiers could easily pass down it. Um, but when we build roads, we build communication, we build uh, trade, and we build the bringing in of tradition and language and tra um, tradition, language, uh, I don't know, culture, different cultures coming all over the place. And, and don't think that the, the Romans weren't traveling the Silk Road at the same time. So Augustus, under his two year, 200 years of Pax Romana, truly, truly built the Roman Empire into one great place, one wonderful place, although it was continued because he obviously did not live to 200 years old. Now, I wish you a wonderful weekend, and uh, which is probably over before you see this, but stay cool because uh, it's going to be 108 today, and tomorrow on Sunday it'll be 110. I will be on the golf course, and uh, it's going to be a pressure cooker. But the one blessing is uh, the ball will fly further because it's so hot. Stay up on your work. Remember to do it all week. Don't wait to the last minute because late work will not do you well. Have a great day. Happy Labor Day. Thanks for watching. Peace.